Hello, this is going to be a tutorial on how to use the terrain tool in HPO3. I will be using an older version of the editor at this time because, because the update with save mode created some issues with the editor and some features would be missing. I will post a download link to the current version of the editor in the description. Also, I am using a dark reskin for the HPO3 level editor and I will be using some custom assets that I have created uh, for this tutorial. I will also post the link to download them if you want to. Okay, so uh, in order to get the terrain done, you should move to the terrain tab and first of all, set the terrain to be visible. Now we have mo multiple tools here. We have uh, a tool to create a terrain, uh, an importer, and a way to generate the terrain. You can only use those tools once per instance of uh, an HBO level editor because of a bug. If you try to use them multiple times they will either not work or crash the editor when you try to close the uh, editor or simply crash the editor when you try to open them. So we will create a terrain now. The first uh, important option is the height map size which is basically the size of the DDS texture file that is used to store the height map. I suggest using 512, uh, 1024, or 2048. Uh, even the 2048 is kind of big for what you'd need in a Soma mod. But yeah, let's go with 1024. Unit size determines how big the map is going to be physically. If it's one, it's going to be uh, the same value, like 1024 meters. If you go for 0 0.5, the map will be um, smaller than the uh, height map and if you uh, and if you put uh, two then the map will be twice the size of the height map but uh, ideally it should be the same size so keep it at one the maximum height uh, determines how high the terrain can go you usually want this to be over 100 so let's say like 126 would work fine maybe even 200 if you have you plan on having really high mountains or something. The next two options, you should keep them as they are because they can really screw up with the terrain. And this is the default value. These are the default values that are used in all of the Soma maps. Um, and they have to do with more low level stuff. So you don't need to really worry with this. And you press on create to create the terrain. And as you can see, I tried to turn on, turn on the point light and the ambient light, but nothing happens. This is because at this point the terrain doesn't have a texture assigned to it. Let's go into the texture tab and add a material. I will add one of my custom materials. And then add at least one target layer for the texture. We will come back to this tab later. Now let's go. Now let's try and make an actual terrain that's not flat. We can either import a height map or generate one. Well, let's try importing one. I have one that's pre-made. It's basically a grayscale uh, height map. You can. You also have an option to import uh, from uh, from raw data, but that's not supported. So we'll only use a DDS file, and we'll try this. Now, usually with importing, you have to think around with the settings, otherwise it will look kind of blocky like a Minecraft map. This isn't really a perfect example since it also has some of that uh, annoying stuff happening here, but uh, you can try to smooth it out. So let's uh, instead try to generate one. We have some basic tools for generating them, and they are kind of limited compared to other height map generating software but you can mess around with the settings and do stuff. And now you have a, a much uglier looking height map there, but this should be easier to work on than the imported one. Okay, now let's uh, try to change the height map a bit with the brush. Now you have three brush types, uh, you can raise or lower it, flatten it or smooth it, <coughs> and they have some shared 
brush settings. Like the brush has an inner radius and the outer radius. The inner radius is always at its full maximum allowed strength, and the outer radius is uh, it has some fall off. So the farther you are from the inner radius, the lesser the effect, will, the less uh, of an effect you will have on the environment. So like if I set the outer radius to 20, which is the maximum, you will see that in the center it's raised a lot more. But if I set the inner radius to also to 20, it will be uh, the same across the whole brush. Uh, the falloff EXP slider controls how much this falloff happens. If you set it to zero, it will basically be as if the uh, whole thing is the inner radius. But if you set it to five, then it will be only it will only happen in the center and barely even happen in the outer radius. I usually keep it at 1 over at 0 if I don't want to think about with the outer radius. Now hardness determines the strength of the effect. So if I set it to 1 it will be really strong and if I set it to really low it will, you will barely notice it. And then there is something but brush noise that's really useless and don't touch the noise frequency slider because it will crash the editor and you don't want that. You will see that it has this weird noise effect. I don't even know if it's noise. It's I don't know if it is useful for anything. Yeah, This would be the general brush settings. And now something that's specific to the raise lower um, type of brush is the height. It's it determines in which direction you will change it. If it's uh, positive, it will raise the train. If it's lower, if it's negative, it will lower the train. We can also flatten the terrain. We can get a sample of the current terrain, and then it will simply set the terrain to be at that height. You can also manually set the height like a hundred or at zero. This is useful if you want to have flat areas for like putting buildings and other stuff on it. And then you have the smooth brush which basically smooths the terrain so you don't have uh, very steep terrain or you don't have like very sudden changes in altitude. And this is really useful if you use flatten a lot and you can use flatten in combination with this to make some uh, pathways. You can easily make a decent looking slope with this. So I made this, now I will try to smooth it out. And you see that I will make a, a slope that is much easier to climb in first person mode. And yeah, you can do a lot of interesting terrain sculpting with this. You will also notice that you have a preview of the height map here, so you can see what you are changing. Now let's take a look at the texture settings. Here you have three tabs, the general, the detail and the cliff tabs. Uh, the general is the basic texture used on the terrain and what you are interested in in this tab is the tiling amount which controls how much tiling there is on the texture and the specular power which determines how shine the material is if it has a specular map. Now in the cliff tab, you can select, you can choose to have, uh, now in the cliff tab, you can choose to have an option to, for, now in the cliff, now in the cliff tab, you can have the editor kind of try to make uh, the more steeper sides of the terrain into a cliff using a different texture. So let's see how that works. And then you can uh, change the scale of the texture. 
like 0 0.2 should be good enough and then the fade angle mode determines how much this effect is applied uh, usually I try to avoid using this because I don't think it looks that good and it looks different in the game uh, compared to the uh, compared to the level editor also let's set this up so that it is visible on the level editor like we're going to let the level settings apply a skybox and a directional light and now let's see how this actually looks like in the game Yep, it doesn't look as good, so I usually try to avoid using this. So in order to disable it, set the fade angle mode to something like 5 and it shouldn't be noticeable anymore. You want, might want to save as, because sometimes this setting doesn't register properly and then try to reload it and yeah it's still visible in some places but if it sets to a higher value it shouldn't uh, be that much of a problem usually what I like to do is to cover up the terrain cliffs with uh, rocks I copied some of the environment rocks which have a scalable texture and applied another material to them and I kind of have this thing that I can use instead and these work great for covering up now back to the terrain tab we might want to have more than one texture on the terrain so in order to have this we must uh, assign a material to the blend layer now if we try to paint it we will notice that there's something wrong with the way we're painting it it's the brush doesn't really fit with what we're doing so we in order to fix this we have to set the layer resolution to be the same resolution or close to that of the height map so if i set it to this i will be able to smoothly paint the terrain. I have also other options like tiling, like I can set it to whatever value I wish. If I, I can also set it higher, but usually it tends to look uglier since on higher value since you can see the way the texture is tiling. So usually it's wise to keep it at like 0.1 to 0.3, depends on the texture. And then you can either add or erase this. If you want to use more than one texture, you can you add additional blend layers, but keep in mind that they are stacked. So that blend layer one will render above blend layer uh, zero and two above one and so on. So if I add this, I will be drawing over both blend layers and of course I can erase from this layer as well and if I try to draw on a lower layer it will draw beneath the other surface diffuse color blend seems to be broken but I think it was supposed to allow you to paint colors over the terrain or to change its diffuse uh, texture like if I wanted to have some yellow snow here I could easily do it like that but it doesn't seem to be working and then the undergrowth which is a bit more interesting undergrowth is basically the engine's way of rendering grass or other grass like objects you also have the undergrowth material editor here and it's just like the terrain generator or the importer you can only use it once per instance of of the editor you can set up the global fade range for grass here now let's add some 
custom undergrowths that I have created. You can add it either in a circle or a polygon. I personally prefer adding it in circles since it has a more organic look. I have some blue grass here that I made. But I can also add it as a polygon. I can change the global values here. But I think that uh, grass rendering is a bit expensive so you should be uh, more careful with that so that you don't have any performance issues. And then you have also more settings if you select each individual primitive. Now let's try and place some static objects and some of the rocks that I made so we can make this area like a bit more presentable. Okay, now we added some basic clips, we can add some other stuff from here. And we want to set up some environmental particles so that we have some snow or something similar. We want to set them to active and then choose a texture. I think the dust texture would look like snow. Temporarily set it very bright so that we know what we are doing. Set the size to something really small. And now we will take around with the settings and see what works and what doesn't. Alternatively, you can use custom-made particles. So yeah, this is a way to set up a very basic winter scene in Soma and to use the terrain editor for doing this. But this is a very broad scene, so you would have to add, a, add in a lot of details in yourself if you actually wanted to do a map. This is only an example. I also will be doing some other basic tutorials on scripting and setting up monsters and other gameplay aspects uh, that should be released very soon. I haven't really done another tutorial in a long time, so this is maybe overdue. So. See you on those other tutorials.